Hey everybody, Austin here again with another Let's Play video. Today, it's going to be Eternal Champions CD, aka Challenge from the Dark Side for the Sega CD. Uh, this is a very late release Sega CD game released, I believe, in 1995. I think it was 95. Might have been late 94, but I'm pretty sure it was 95. And um, it's a pretty awesome fighting game for the system. Uh, if you've played Eternal Champions on the Sega Genesis, Eternal Champions CD is kind of like the Super Street Fighter 2 of the Eternal Champions series. So basically, you've got Eternal Champions, and then you've got the second one that's kind of like a new game, but it's more or less just has a lot of additions, including a combat system upgrade and so forth. So... Um, what we're going to do is attempt to get through this game. It's a very difficult fighting game when you're playing against the CPU, uh, even though you do have a lot of combat enhancements in this version over the original Sega Genesis game. So, um, we're actually on the main intro, and this is one of the other big differences from the Genesis 1 to the Sega CD version, is you've got this full motion video story, uh, which it looks kind of bad. I mean, most Sega CD FMV did, but I actually like the premise for the story. Um, and since I've been talking over the, you know, the eternal champion who's actually telling you the story, uh, basically what the story is, is uh, there's a set group of characters that have perished over eons, you know, different uh, ages. And um, they're characters that had or could have had major influence on, you know, how history progressed. And so basically what happens is you got this guy, the eternal champion, who's running out of life energy, basically. Um, he goes back throughout the ages and grabs these people and throws them into a contest, a fighting contest. Um, and the one, or the one character that wins can go back in time and change their death right before they are about to die and then thus change the course of history. Um, so these, this is basically the, the pre-story uh, I'm going to go ahead and just let this roll out so you guys can hear it and sort of understand what's going on story-wise, and then we'll go ahead and just go right into the game. Ramses III, 151 BC, last of the great pharaohs, lost in the river of time. Trident, 110 BC, hero of Atlantis, sealing that island's fate when defeated by Roman treachery. Riptide, 1566 AD. A free booter that lived for adventure and justice on the high seas and died for pieces of eight. Xavier Pendragon, 1692. An alchemist burned as a warlock. Raven Ginda, 1802, a mystic healer with control over time itself, but blind to her own dark fate. Dawson McShane, 1849, a lone wolf with a taste for gold and an eye for justice. Jetta Max, 1899, a circus acrobat skilled in savat, this royal Russian fell victim to sabotage. <laughs> Larson Tyler, 1920, an ex-cat burglar and kung fu expert. He realized the mob treachery much too late. Taro Yamoto, 1993, a corporate assassin whose change of heart ended her career. Mitchell Middleton Knight, a.k.a. Midnight, 2100 A.D., a scientist turned cursed vampire by a virus of his own creation. Jonathan Blade, 2030, a bounty hunter sent to track down a deranged scientist and his poisonous bio of chemicals. He is set up by his own government and eliminated. Rax 
Coswell 2345, a destructive combination of man and machine killed to ensure a winning wager. These are my champions. Let the contest begin. Not so fast, my friend. You didn't notice our four new contestants. I withheld them, hoping to hasten your destruction. But I weary of all this scribble and scrawl, so I too shall join your contest. Be warned, my power will destroy everything you have here. So there you have it, guys. <laughs> the main story of the game. Um, you know, the full motion video is dated, but for the time, it was actually really, really solid full motion video. And some of the, I'd say it's some of the best FMV on the Sega CD. Uh, not just from the video perspective. I mean, they did manage to get full screen video, uh, even though it's grainy, as you would expect from Sega CD video. Um, but like the sound design on the video is really well done, too. And you might have noticed <clears throat> is that... Um, for different eras, they would take the same theme, and as the years went on, they would actually add an extra element or line to that same theme. And so you'd have this theme that goes from multiple eras, and it's really cool. Good attention to detail that you didn't really see with too many games back then. Uh, fortunately, Eternal Champions uh, CD has a lot of other, you know, great uh, attention to detail with it as well. Um, the uh, fatalities that the original game was known for um, has been expanded heavily, as have the characters. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and play as Larson. Uh, if you hit down, you can actually go and change your difficulty mode. So we're going to be playing on the stock warrior setting. The champion, you pretty much have to go through almost the entire game without losing. Uh, if you lose, you get sent back like three or four characters and... The AI is just extremely difficult. Uh, the AI is just difficult, period, uh, in this game. Um, but we're going to play it on the warrior level. And what happens on warrior level, the warrior level, is if I continue, um, I can just continue where I left off. However, you only get two continues. So we have two chances to try to get through the whole game. I can't make any guarantees, but we'll see what happens. So... One other thing I wanted to explain is that, you know, not just did they have some great attention to detail in the full motion video, but they have uh, multiple types of fatalities you can do now, whereas before it was pretty much just one per level. Um, you've got lots of extra hidden characters too. Uh, like you'll notice there's a top row and there's a middle row where there's actually space for a whole bottom row of characters as well. Uh, and this game has a ton of hidden characters. Um, uh, it's just you, you've got normal characters. You got this like corrupt senator. You've got this military dude uh, And actually the bonus stage for him is the jungle level from the original eternal champions uh, Which is not featured the norm in the normal level set in this game uh, But you can also play as like a chicken and a snake and uh, It's just it, it's it's crazy. Uh, you can also I believe unlock the eternal champion and the dark eternal champion uh, Which the dark eternal champion is another character they added into this game um, but yeah, um, so yeah, they just did an amazing job with this game, uh, compared to the first Eternal Champions. The game runs smoother overall, it doesn't have that, like, jerky nature, uh, that you often got with the original Eternal Champions. Uh, graphics are about on par with the original, but they do look a little bit sharper overall. Uh, and the soundtrack in this game just is awesome. It's one of the best Sega CD soundtracks, in my opinion. Um... And the game's actually not played with bad load times either. Like, bam, done. Um, we'd still be loading if this was the first Mortal Kombat. Um, so one of the biggest changes to the actual combat itself is that in this Eternal Champions, you can actually do combos now. Although you're probably not gonna see me doing too many combos. You're gonna see me doing some like one, two hit combos uh, because the AI just has a tendency of blocking everything and I'm not paying attention. I'm getting eaten up by that. You want to do it again? No? Okay. See, there's a three-hit combo right there. Uh, you cannot do that in uh, the original Eternal Champions. The original Eternal Champions, 
Uh, you would basically just knock an enemy down with one hit. Uh, that sort of thing. Uh, you've got very light air juggles in this game, so if you, if you hit an enemy while they're in the air, you can actually jump up and hit them again before they fall down. Again, something you couldn't do in the original game. So, as a result, this game actually feels a hell of a lot better than the original Eternal Champions. And if you, if you liked the original Eternal Champions pretty much at all, like, this game is a must-play. Like, it is so much better, uh, just combat-wise, than the original. There you go, little two-hit combo there. Um, now, for those of you guys that are really unfamiliar with the series, uh, the big thing that Eternal Champions was known for um, was its stage fatalities. Um, now, in Eternal Champions, basically, if you uh, attacked an opponent and, you know, on the last hit, hit them at a very specific part of the level, they would trigger a stage fatality, um, also called overkills or sudden deaths. In, in this game, there's two. There's the overkill and the sudden death. Those are both stage fatalities. Um, bam, we just got one. And something to note, if you've played the first one, this game is a hell of a lot gorier than the first one. As you can see, uh, in the first Eternal Champions, there basically wasn't any blood to speak of, if I recall correctly. But in this game, they took it up. They definitely kicked it up a notch. And some fatalities are relatively tame, but others, you'll just like, your jaw will drop. and You'll be like, wow, somebody actually had to draw that back in the day. Pixel art. Um, so you've got two stage fatalities per level. Now, a character also has what's called a personal vendetta. And this is basically activated kind of like an ultimate kill in the Killer Instinct series where, you know, um, before their life is completely down, you can do the move and you'll kill them in one hit. Uh, it's basically like a fatality. But in this game, when you defeat an opponent, they don't just sit there like Mortal Kombat dizzy or like in Killer Instinct where they're dizzy and you can do a fatality. Um, uh, this is more like kind of like Killer Instinct 2 where you, you know, when their life is low, um, you kind of you can you can do the ultimate or you can do the fatality now there's also a fourth subset of fatalities uh, i forgot what they were called but they're actually full motion video fatalities and um and those are really really hard to do i've only done a couple of them over the years but basically what happens is at the end of the match your opponent gets zapped up sucked up by the dark eternal champion you get zapped into his palace or whatever and he kills you full in full motion video uh so there's a fatality of that for every single character, uh, every single main character. I don't think there are uh, like full motion video fatalities for like the chicken or anything like that. Uh, so it's just crazy. And then if you're also into like, you know, the horror fatality stuff, bam, nice little combo there, man. I, oh, it's so good. It's so good. Uh, but yeah, if you're into like that horror type stuff, you know, and the gruesome fatalities and whatnot, there's also, um, if you, when you beat the game, or even if you don't beat the game, um, actually I don't, it might only do it if you beat the game, I don't remember. Um, but, you know, as you saw in the intro, um, you know, it basically shows the character, every character in the game, right before they die. The, the Eternal Champion picks them up, and, you know, right before they die. And... So basically what happens is if you beat the game, say with Larson, he goes back, he disarms the bomb that kills him, and then they do a story reel after that, so you can actually understand what happens afterwards. Um, but then it goes back and it shows every other character dying in their full motion video segment so that part where you see them getting zapped off in the intro it takes you back and um and you see every character die in full motion video format so there's almost kind of like five different types of deaths in the game it's pretty crazy um so the game just has a lot of content if you're into that kind of stuff and i'm getting my ass kicked by the ai which is okay i had a good round one but having a terrible round two. Actually, I guess it's not that bad, all things considered, except I just lost. Uh, this game's definitely harder to play when you're talking and playing at the same time. It's not like Mortal Kombat for me or Street Fighter where I can just destroy this, uh, the AI. Uh, the computer AI in this game is definitely uh, tricky, for sure.
So one of my favorite just quick combos with Larson is just doing the down and medium kick, and then you just link that right into a uh, fierce ducking kick like that. It's a quick little little combo. It does some decent damage. Um, the AI has uh, the tendency to block it a lot, but they also have a tendency to run into it. Ooh, she called me a fatso. I take offense to that lady. You also have taunts in this game, and one of the things that was carried over from the first Eternal Champions is you've got the yin-yang symbol in uh, the top corners of the screen. And that basically denotes uh, what kind of special moves you can do or how many special moves you can do. Um, every time you do a special move, it'll take a little bit off of that yin-yang, uh, but it does charge back up. Uh, so basically, I think the purpose of it was uh, to limit spam and chi. So no just throwing fireballs all day like you can in Street Fighter or, or, or something like that, or another popular fighting game. Um, but it probably also goes in line with the story in that the Eternal Champion, I think, is kind of like providing your characters the power or whatever to do their thing. And so the Yin Yang kind of makes sense. He's got limited power or something like that. I have no idea. I'm just trying to make sense of it. Um, but from a gameplay standpoint, it basically prevents Chi. So like right there, I can't throw any more projectiles. I threw about four in a row um, and that was it. Um, so much like Street Fighter, I do try to play uh, a little aggressive with my projectiles. I try to use them all up because even if the AI blocks them, it's it's doing chip damage. Except for characters like Raven that can reflect them, so... Now when you play this game, you'll notice that some characters have a tendency of just running into your attacks. Raven's one of those characters. Um, whereas characters like, oh, come on. If she landed right here, she would have been able to... Oh, she needed to move over just a little bit, and I would have done the stage fatality. I think it's on that big pillar thing. So again, there's two stage fatalities per level. Um, and uh, some stage fatalities, you have to knock a character down at a very specific part of the screen. Uh, others, you just hit them um, at a certain part. The game will sort of freeze frame. You'll teleport off screen, and then the character will teleport into whatever object is supposed to kill them. Um, the other type of stage fatality, you literally just knock the character into whatever kills them. So it's kind of like on the fly, and it's, it's interesting. So... Now let's see if I can do the fatality on this level. Dawson's not usually very difficult. He's big, he has a tendency of running into your stuff. Although he can do some serious damage as well. He's got combos that'll take away like half your health. Oh, I messed that combo up. When you get near a wall, if you got an opponent cornered, it's a little bit harder to do some combos, I found. Now, a lot of fighting games sort of handle, you know, cornering enemies a little bit different than others. So, when, a, when an opponent taunts you, he actually drains your energy, your special move energy. You can also taunt the opponent. Um, I should probably be doing that more often. It gets a little repetitive, though, because you're... You know, saying the same thing over and over again. But if you want to have an easier time against the AI... Doing that is probably a really good idea. But I prefer just to try to play the aggressive game myself. Just use up all my special attacks because... Let's get him over to this side. He needs to be on this side if I want to do this fatality. Come on, dude. I would really like to throw you. Oh, it got it. 
Okay, this is one of the more gruesome fatalities in the game. And this one can actually take a while to kick in. It depends on where you are in the screen. The screen has to fade dark blue like this. <laughs> and that's one of those fatalities I just look at. I'm like, damn, somebody actually had to go in and draw that. Like, uh, some of the fatalities in this game are way gorier than, like, anything else that was available at the time. So that was one of the, like, if you're, like, 13 years old and you got this game... And you were all, you were, you know, you were all into like the Mortal Kombat games and stuff like that. This just took it to the next level. It looks tame by today's standards, but back then, I mean, you had MK and MK2. And then MK3 just got really cheesy and goofy with the fatalities. Um, but, uh, so this was definitely something to behold back in the day. Again, very tame by today's standards. But, yeah. If you like your violence in video games, this game... Uh, it's one of the best for that from the 16-bit era. So Rax is always one of those characters that I have a bit of a hard time with. He likes to just block everything. And like a lot of characters, he's got anti-air attacks. Man, why was that not connecting? He's got anti-air attacks, so you don't really want to jump in at him that much, you know. When he does this spinning thing, I guess it's okay. Much like a Street Fighter game, uh, you actually have an easier time hitting your opponents if you use a lot of weak attacks. Your weak attacks, they come out much faster. They have, I guess you could say, they probably have frame advantage. Um, and so ideally, you want to be using a lot of weak attacks. Uh, the computer opponents do have a tendency of getting hit by your weak attacks, whereas your medium and fierce attacks, they have a tendency of just blocking like crazy. Unless you happen to get them while they're trying to perform the move themselves. Little two-hit combo. Now, you're going to see me using one thing with Larson later on in the game. It's this attack. It's just his down and medium. Or not medium, but down and but weak kick attack. So down and A, basically. This is a game that uses the six-button controller, just like Street Fighter. Um... And basically what I can do is this actually does chip damage. It's one of the only moves that's not a special move he has that does chip damage. And the computer AI has a tendency of just sitting there and blocking every single one. So if you have all day and you're confident this works, you can literally just sit here all day and take out your opponent like this. Now there are a couple opponents later on in the game where I'm going to have to do this. Uh, simply because they're so difficult. Uh, Xavier is probably one. If I can get him cornered like this, uh, I'm probably going to do this because he is such a pain to, to defeat. Uh, most of the other characters in the game I don't really have a problem with, um, but some characters like Rax, uh, Xavier, very difficult. The Eternal Champion even. Um, <laughs> and the Eternal Champion in this game has something like eight different forms. Oh, look at that. He got out of it. But it doesn't really matter because I took away most of his health doing it, so... So that'll probably get a little boring later on in the game, but it is what it is. It's, you know, I'd, I would like to beat the game for you guys during this Let's Play, so I'm going to try to do whatever I can uh, in order to do so. Trident's not one that's usually that difficult. Uh, I mean, you do have to be careful against any character in this game. It doesn't really matter what character it is, but there are some characters that are more susceptible to your jumping fierce kicks, which can lead me into a nice damaging combo. Um, see, even though I didn't really go into a damaging combo, I was still able to do a two-hit juggle. Bam, just like that. See, he still got hit by it. Again, some characters are a lot easier to, to fight against than others. And of course, it might also just depend on the character. Like, I'm playing as Larson. Larson's always been my main character in this game. Uh, I also played as Riptide a little bit back in the day, although I'm not very good with her now. Uh, Larson's always been the character I've always stuck with over the years, so... Even when I don't play this game, you know, uh, for a few years, I can go back, pick it up, and still kind of know what I'm doing with Larson. Um, whereas with Riptide, I kind of have to relearn the character, and even then, I'm still not very good with her, so... Uh, but Larson, I know exactly what I'm doing. Ah, and I always mess up that last one. You can do this roll attack into that, and it's just... Crazy combo, lots of hits. And uh, with Larson, you can either end that combo with this or his roll attack. That. 
But it depends on whether you get multiple hits on your Fierce Punch. Or if it's just a single hit. If it's a single hit, you have to use the hook. So you basically do jump, you, you do a jump kick. And then medium kick. And he'll do that axe kick. Um, which does multiple hits. And then uh, you can press high punch. And he'll either do one strong hit. And then you can link that into your hook attack. Or he'll do multiple hits uh, with his high punch. And then from there you can use your roll attack. Uh, so there's actually some pretty nice combo strings in this game, uh, which just definitely makes the game so much more fun to play than the first Eternal Champions. You know, the first Eternal Champions was like, you know, we're going to kind of try to do the Street Fighter thing, but unlike Street Fighter, we're not going to have combos or anything like that. Like, the system just didn't work like that. But in this game, combos all the way. It definitely feels... Oh! Got it on the, uh, that was nice. I've never seen that before, where I launched him in the air from that and then hooked him. That was really cool. Shame he did the dog attack so much. I mean, not a shame, because when he does the dog attack, he leaves himself wide open, which you saw me just throwing him. And throwing does really good damage in this game. Um, but I think it did chip damage, so I didn't get a perfect. At least I don't think I did. Getting a perfect on this in this game is just something that does not happen, uh, really, ever when I play this game. It's probably happened a couple times over the years, and that's it. God, that does so much damage. So again, a lot of times I'll just use my special attacks like that, because I know if I use all four, and if he blocks all four, well, it's basically like the same damage as doing, you know, a medium... Oh, I did the fatality totally by accident. Oh, man. Is this... This is the one where he gets zapped in the middle. Okay. I actually like the other one better, but this is, you know, still pretty cool. Kind of funny, actually. <laughs> That's the funny part. <laughs> His bones are shaking. Uh, there's another one where you actually... He lands on the floor and then a trap door opens and the body just falls through this like massively tall corridor. And as the body falls, there's like these uh, razor blades and buzz saws and axes like just moving in and out and like the body gets chopped up and then it does this like three times and by the end of it, you just see like a floating skull and it just dissolves on the floor it's hilarious uh so it's so over the top that's exactly what it is and uh if you want to see all these fatalities you can just do uh you can find an eternal champions cd uh fatality compilation on youtube and just check them all out i don't know if there are any that showcase all the full motion video fatalities uh but you can find ones that have all the the normal fatality stage fatalities as well as the personal vendettas, like Killer Instinct style fatalities. Now Riptide has a... has a tendency of using her Reflect ability. Ooh, nice. A little forehead combo there. And that's something I actually just figured out on this Let's Play, doing low punch, low punch, low kick to... Or low punch, low punch, low medium kick to low high kick. And it's a four-way combo. And actually, you know what I might be able to do is if I... Oh. I wonder if that'll only work in a corner. If it'll work at all. Yeah, I can't do that move. I think I might be able to do this attack if I was on an actual joystick or something like that. Because basically how you have to do it is you have to hit uh, back for two seconds, then forward, and then medium punch and high punch together. And that's actually pretty... Jesus, man. She wasn't even up and she still went into her special move. I wonder if that's even possible from a human standpoint. Like if a human uh, character can do that. Alright, I would like to do this fatality as well.
Oh, it didn't happen. If I threw her, it would have. This is a pretty funny fatality too. And I mean, it's kind of funny, I guess. Uh, you throw the character off the boat into the water and this massive like great white shark comes up, kind of like Jaws style and just starts chomping on the character. It's, <laughs> it's just, ah. Uh... It's just so over the top. It's awesome. Like, I, it's just one of those things. Or Again, it's just like, wow, somebody actually had to think this up and then draw it and animate it. <laughs> You're just like, man, that's I know, it's so hard to comprehend. <laughs> so Shadow, much like other characters, has uh, reflect attack as well. I don't know if it's something every character has in the game. Um, but she's also got that teleport move, which is actually really annoying. <laughs> it's definitely annoying. There we go. See, she can just come right behind you like that. Now, that shouldn't have hit her. She actually was probably trying to do a move or something like that, which is why it connected. But that combo never works. If you do the quick one-two when you're trying to do your high punch as a part of that combo, the, uh, the hook won't work. Man, his medium kick has no priority in the air. So whenever you uh, hit a character in the air, you want to just jump back up and do like a jump kick or something like that to get an extra free hit. Bam. Oh man, I'm getting a lot of stage fatalities completely by accident. <laughs> it just explodes. <laughs> There's another one where if you do it at the very edge of the screen, I think it's at the edge of the screen. Um, no, it's actually, I don't I don't think it's right at the edge of the screen. Some, some stage fatalities are really easy to do. Like you literally just do them at the edge of the screen and you'll pretty much get them guaranteed, much like the one on uh, Dawson's level. Uh, but on Shadow's level, one of them, the one you just saw there was actually in the first Eternal Champions. A lot of these were in the first game, uh, but they're more gruesome now. Um, but there's another one where, on Shadow's level, where, like, the foot of, like, Godzilla comes down and smashes the character. It's, it's hilarious. Um, not Godzilla exactly, but you, but you know what I mean. It's one of those Japanese, uh, movie monsters. It's, it's pretty funny. Um, so this is one of those fights I always have a problem with. See, he does the reflect thing as well. So if I can, I'm gonna try to corner him. See, that is just... Oh, I hate that move. I hate it so much. Okay, so what I'm gonna try to do is see if this works. I mean, if he keeps getting hit by it, even better. Look at that. This does a little bit of damage. So I'm going to go ahead and take it, because you can't really jump into Xavier at all. And you can't really attack him when he's getting up either. His uppercut, much like Ken and Ryu's uh, Dragon Punches in Street Fighter, just does has crazy priority. And it's got a really big hitbox, too, from what I can tell. Damn, you see? Just like that. All I was trying to do was throw him. See? Bam. Oh, I forgot what this one does. He's got a variety of different uh, projectiles that have different properties. Wow. He was like, that's payback, bitch. <laughs>
Oh, stupid ass teleport spell. Let's me cheese you. Oh, don't do it again. That's all I needed. That's all. I'll take it. I mean, he's just such a pain every time I get to him. Uh, definitely one of my least favorite characters to fight against. Now, if I was playing against a human being, it might be a different story. Um, I don't know if the computer opponents, you know, have any special abilities that a human... I don't know if the computer opponents don't have... Jesus, I can't even talk right now. I don't know if the computer opponents have special abilities that a human player cannot do. Like in Mortal Kombat, the CPU could do standing uppercuts. They could throw you out of like sweeps and stuff like that. Um, whereas a normal player couldn't. It was just not possible. Uh, so I don't know if in Eternal Champions they have those abilities. Bam, there it is. Now, Larson actually has another move you can do. You can actually attach to the ceiling. But it's not really something that is all that useful. Why isn't he doing it? There we go. I never found it to be all that useful, so I don't ever do it. So, for anybody that's really familiar with this game and you're not seeing me using certain moves, it's because I probably don't find them all that use of, useful. Like, he's got this attack where you can press A and C together, or low kick and high kick. He does that, and, you know, maybe it's something that would be useful if I had a joystick. Because, you know, again, when he did his, like, fire bird attack and I used it, I knocked him out of that attack. Um, but for the most part, it's really hard to do when... There we go. It's really hard to do when you're not playing with your, like, your fingers on top of the controller. Like, I'm just using my thumb to press all the buttons. So, it's kind of hard to press A and C together with just one thumb. Like, now if I was using, like, uh, an arcade panel, I'd have all my fingers available and I'd be able to press A and C together really quick on the fly. But, you know, the way I play console fighting games without a joystick is totally different from how I play arcade fighting games. So, I just don't use that move at all. So we should actually be getting close to the end of the game. We've gone through pretty much all the characters I can think of. This might actually be the last character. Um, I'm trying to think. There's no mirror match in this game. So, you know, which makes sense if you're going by the story. I forgot about his reflect attack. It literally makes like a baseball sound noise. Like, you know, if you hit a baseball with a bat, uh, that's what happens when Slash ref uh, reflects your projectiles. It's hilarious to me. Yeah, <laughs> clunk like a baseball. <laughs> I love little things like that in video games. See if we can get him over to this side and do the uh, dinosaur fatality. Nope. The attacks have to be a, of a certain power, it seems. And in some cases, you have to actually be knocking them in a direction. Uh, whereas he just kind of landed and... I don't know. Maybe it had to be with like a fierce punch or fierce kick or something like that. I'm not sure. Yep, last one. Well, second to last one. Uh, this is the Eternal Champion. And the Eternal Champion in the original Eternal Champions game um, had like f either four or five forms. And uh, you basically had to beat him in one go. Um, and if you died, you know, it's still best two out of three 
for you or well for him it's best two out of three for you you just have to beat him once you have to go through all four or five forms in one go um but if he beats you once you get another try but you start back at the first form um However, in this game, he's got, instead of four or five forms, he's got uh, eight or nine forms. So it's really a grind trying to beat this guy. Uh, and the same thing happens with the Dark Eternal Champion, which the Dark Eternal Champion, after this guy, um, is a new boss just to this game. He's the ultimate final boss. And just like the Eternal Champion, he's got like eight or nine forms as well. Um, and I was trying to explain that, but it looks like the game actually kicked me in automatically, so. So we'll see what happens. Oh yeah, he's got that ability that is a major pain. Wow, that connected. Weird. Gonna take advantage of that free chip damage. So you do get a little bit of health back every time you defeat him. So if I can, you know, stick around with the full health bar, that would be nice. That would be very, very nice. So that was one form. We're on our, we're on our second form now. So I'm gonna count these out. Gonna take the easy way out. <laughs> Why not? <clears throat> so, form number three. All right, fourth form. Now this form could be a pain. He's actually, yeah, he's got this attack right here. So if I can, I'm just going to try to do chip damage on him. Because that attack is just a major pain. Fortunately, in this final fight, there's no time limit. You'll see it just says 99 at the top. And it stays like that for the, the whole match. Take it. <clears throat> okay, fifth form. So it is nine forms. So it's basically the first form, and then he changes to these four forms we see in the background. And uh, then the uh, background objects actually change.
So basically, the Eternal Champion is actually using one of Jetta's moves, where he can basically just move really fast. There are some questionable abilities in this game like that, that make it kind of unfair. Like, if you're playing as Jetta, she can just turn into her fast mode and go really, really fast. Uh, and it's really a pain to deal with. She attacks faster, she's harder to deal with. Um, so there are a few abilities like that I kind of wish they just left out in this game. But they probably left them in because they were in the first game. And in the first game, it was really bad with some of those abilities, like Jetta in particular. Um, so I do wish they, they cut them out in this game, but probably for the sake of continuity or whatever. You know, from game to game. You know, people that were familiar with Jetta back in the first game, they probably wanted them to continue to be familiar with her in this game. They probably didn't want to pull uh, Killer Instinct 1 to Killer Instinct 2 move, where... Well, actually, KI2 wasn't even out at this point, um, but KI1 was. But what happened with Killer Instinct 1 and Killer Instinct 2, and I'll just, you know, I guess it's unrelated, but I'll go ahead and talk about it anyway, is that they changed up a lot of the moves for the same characters in Killer Instinct 2. And as a result, a lot of people didn't really like the game. Um, which is a shame, because KI2 is actually uh, just as good as the first one, just in its own way. Um, nice little three hit there. Killed him with chip damage. Alright, so we're getting close to the end here. Which is good, because the last time I tried to do this, I got destroyed by the Eternal Champion, so... I like it when they get up really close to me like that, because... Um, if you're down and they get up right next to you, it's basically a guaranteed throw on your part. And one more form, I think. So throws are really, really powerful in this game. So, you know, if you get knocked down, uh, not all is bad, because if they just walk right up to you, you can just get a, three, uh, a free throw off of them. And this is another reason I like to spam my projectiles, because sometimes they actually connect. And I had like three in a row connect, and I just took, took off almost half his health because of it. So, you know, it's in those cases, I'll take it. And that's, that's gonna do it. That's gonna do it. That's it! So now we go to the Dark Eternal Champion. <sighs> Making good progress, you know, even if we don't win here... It's good that we got here. I was worried I might not even get here because it's not an easy fighting game if you're playing uh, the story mode. So just like the Eternal Champion, the Dark Eternal Champion has nine forms. So it's it's a long, drawn-out battle. Oh, the Dark Eternal Champion has more nasty tricks up his sleeve, you could say. He's got attacks that'll just, like, grab you from the floor and just do real crazy damage. 
So what I'm probably going to try to do is if I get him cornered... Um, yeah, see, that didn't work. Ooh. I'll take that. I like it when you stun them. There's a dizzy mechanic just like in Street Fighter 2. And um, when they get dizzy, just jump in with a fierce attack, start a, start a big combo, take away a quarter of their health. Especially in the final boss, you really want to take advantage of that if you can. See, just like that. Free damage. The more free damage we get, the faster this goes. One of the things I've always liked on this this level and the prior levels, if you look in the background behind the windows, you see the, the floor scrolling, you know, just a very simple uh, scrolling effect, parallax scrolling. Um, but it's something I've always liked on the, uh, you know, 16-bit games. Use of good scrolling like that. Why, well, yes, take that chip damage, please. <laughs> Free damage. That was fast, actually. So we're on the second set of forms now. Good progress, good progress. Lucky hit. He tried jumping and my hook still hit him. So either his hitbox is really big or my hook's hitbox is really big. Watch out for that. That's not good. We're getting too close now. Whew. Yeah, getting a little too close for comfort now. 
Because if we die, we've got to do all eight or nine forms over again. Probably taking like a hundred hits. Maybe, probably more like 50, I'm guessing. I want my health back. <laughs> I was like, screw it. Oh, we won. Wow. What a way to go out, Eternal Champion. Sorry about that, man. So, it's gonna basically show the ending now, and then it's gonna uh, scroll some text. So what I'm going to do is let you guys just sort of read all that and watch it in peace, and then I'll come back in. You have won the right to return to your life. Live long. Fight this battle forever. Time will just reset, and it shall occur again.
So that's that, guys. Eternal Champions Challenge from the Dark Side on the Sega CD. Uh, I'm glad we were able to make it through the whole game. That was pretty cool. Um, because again, every time I play this game, I don't always make it through the whole thing. Um, like when I practiced this on stream a couple of weeks back, I actually lost um, at the, the first Eternal Champion. I didn't even get to the second one. Um, and a couple times before that, I think I lost at like Xavier or somebody like that. So it's really... You know, all over the place for me when I play this game. Um, so, no, I'm glad we were able to beat this game. There's uh, one of the hidden characters. He just came up. Um, and again, his level was actually the jungle stage from the first Eternal Champion. So, uh, they actually made that a secret level for a lot of the hidden characters, which is pretty cool. Um, made room for some more original new stages in this game, which was neat. Um... Yeah, I mean, Eternal Champion CD, I, I think is personally, I might be a little biased here because I had this game back in the day, but I think it's actually the best fighting game on the Sega CD. Um, it's got pretty much the most amount of characters, the most amount of secrets, uh, fatalities, um, basically just overall content of all the fighting games in the system. Um, and uh, it's, I think, easily the best fighting game on the system. You had some great ones like Samurai Showdown, you know, I heard Fatal Fury Special was pretty good. Um, but, I mean, Eternal Champion CD just, to me, got everything right. Uh, and it's still a ton of fun to play today. Uh, thanks to the combo system. Uh, and stuff like that. There's just... It holds up very well. And it's a good playing game. It feels good. It's responsive. Um, and it's even fun just playing it single player, you know. Uh, which I can't always say the same for a lot of other fighting games. So... But lots of stuff to do in this game. Tons of characters. Great stuff. I love the soundtrack. It's just... It's good stuff. So if you have a Sega CD... Uh, and you want to try this game out... Definitely either pick up a copy... Or make a backup of it... Since the Sega CD will just read CDRs without an issue. Uh, and try it out. It's really, really fun. So... Uh, with that said, guys... I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up here. Uh, go ahead and hit start. There's not really much else to the credits. Um... So, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I will be back with other Let's Plays sometime soon. Uh, and until then, take care.